echo. Circles can be broken. Chase looked at his phone. Kurtu had texted him say he's running late and he'll be at the restaurant in ten minutes or so. He took a breath and walked inside. It had seemed like a good idea at the time to meet up with Leo and his new boyfriend while they were all in the same city. Now it was happening. He was suddenly unsure. They'd been out of contact for a year or so. Then Chase had visited Leo when he passed through Peyton. They'd stayed in touch for another year and now this meeting was happening. He looked around the restaurant and noticed a reddish-brown grizzly sitting at a table. The bear looked over and waved a paw. Chase, he called in a deep voice. Chase walked over to his table and the bear stood up, holding out a paw. Well, Leo showed me some pictures of you. He's in the men's room. I think he just needed a moment. Is uh, Kurtzu not with you? He'll be here soon, uh, Chase said, shaking the bear's paw. The bear looked confused for a moment. Oh, jeez, sorry. I'm Griff. Uh, Leo's told me a lot about you. Heh, <laughs> don't believe all of it. The bear smiled. Oh, I think most of it is true, though a little embellished. Did... Did he tell you about what happened in Echo at the end? Griff's smile vanished. Oh, he did, poor Dab. Oh, I was cutching for the rest of the night after that. Made me think of what... <laughs> He coughed and visibly made an effort to alter his mood. Oh, you don't want to be hearing Old Valley's history. If it was you telling it, I would, Chase said. I know, he makes his living from that voice, said Leo, suddenly appearing at the table. Chase stood up. Hey, Leo. There was a moment's awkwardness and then they hugged each other. Chase felt some metallic coldness against his fur and when they stepped back he looked at Leo's wrist. There was an anchor on it attached to a strip of leather. He glanced across at Griff to see that he was wearing the one too. Heh, <laughs> these weren't my idea, Leo said. Osito here thought of it. Well, the last thing my grandpa told me was to find someone to be my anchor in life. Keep me safe whenever storms blew up. Oh, he used to be a sailor, he shrugged. Well, after Leo and I had been going out for a while, I realised he was my anchor and I'd seen these, so... He trailed off, waving a paw vaguely. I wasn't sure about it, Chase, but his reasons were good. Jay smiled. Well, I still have mine, Leo. It's put away, but it's there. Leo smiled in return, and there was an awkward pause. So, are you living in Peyton, Griff? Oh, uh, yeah, we're renting a place together at the moment. Well, I can work from home mainly, and if I have to go to a studio, it could be anywhere. So, as my blithe gawk here won't leave the family business, that's where I am. With a high AC bill. Leo playfully punched the bear's arm. You also get my mom's cooking once a week or so. Oh, true, I also got your family eating Welsh cakes. Chase felt himself relax. He'd been hoping that Leo had found someone good, and from the way they were acting, it seemed like it. He didn't talk about it, but he had felt some guilt about dumping Leo. Twice. And was, he was happy that the wolf was with someone. Oh, I'll be back in a moment, Griff said, patting Leo's paw. Chase looked at the grizzlies retreating back. Oh, well, subtle enough, I'll let you two be alone together, move. Leo chuckled. Yeah, he's... Good like that. He's actually been more help than the therapist I saw. You stopped seeing that guy. After the effort we put all put into getting you to go in the first place. Yeah, Trula. He did help me with some stuff, but when I met Griff it was like getting a boyfriend and a therapist in one. He's so chill I can tell him anything and he won't get upset. He used to be a bartender before his career really started. He's still an amazing listener. Does he know about Echo and everything? Yeah, we were just hanging out at his place one night and... It all just came out. <laughs> That's why I agreed with him about our anchors. I think he's not so much an anchor as an unmovable rock I'm attached to. How are things going with you and Cud? Oh great, we love our new place. Has a great pool up the back. <laughs> Otters and their waters. We've been doing a lot of work on it. Kind of the reason why we're here. We don't want to spend money on a big holiday, but this is a good break from all that work. I'm glad you suggested this. I think we both need it. It's good to see you looking so happy, Leo. I miss what we had together, Otter, but maybe... He looked away from Chase and down at his paw, making patterns on the tablecloth. This is better for us. Uh, yeah, Chase replied, suddenly feeling awkward. The resulting silence was broken by Leo calling over the kudzu as the raccoon entered the restaurant. Griff reappeared at the table as kudzu sat down and they were properly introduced. Kudzu looked a little confused as Griff was talking, which the bear noticed. Well, I work as a voice actor, and narrator and the like. So if I sound familiar, that could be it. Kudzu nodded. Oh, that's it. Chase had us listening to an audiobook on the drive here. 
the Howley Bain Chronicles. Uh, he loves that writer. Um, uh, oh, Skinny's a good guy. Skinny? Chase asked more than a bit incredulously, causing the bed to start rumbling with laughter. Oh, the first time I saw him I was a recording, the thing I noticed that he's tall and thin as a rake that's been dieting. So when I forgot his name, I just called him Skinny. Oh, it sort of stuck. The waitress chose that moment to arrive with menus and the conversation became more food-oriented. After the meal, the four of them walked around the shops for a while before dropping into a movie theatre. As the evening approached, they headed to an amusement park. It wasn't quite Southwest Adventures, there were plenty of large rides and lots of fun smaller ones as well. The coloured lights were starting to show up as the light faded and there were good-humoured crowds everywhere. Leo immediately led the way to the largest roller coaster and they stood in line for half an hour or so. When they reached the end, Leo dragged Griff towards the front while Chase and Kudzu stayed in the centre. Well, that was something, Griff said as they walked away after the ride, leaning on Leo a bit. You're not used to those, Griff, Chase asked. Oh no, we had to travel a lot to get to the big rides. Well, Barry Island never had anything like that. I should have seen him after the event horizon chase. How much tea did you need after that? Oh shush, <laughs> the bear said with a chuckle. They went on some more of the big rides before pausing to grab some food. The park had a really good pizza place. They sat around a table with the remnants of the pizzas, hearing the noises of happy Saturday night crowds. Oh, so it's a really good idea, Katsu said. Yeah, Chase agreed, leaning into him slightly. We should do this again sometime. We're still all here tomorrow, but we should plan a weekend or something for the future. The others nodded. Well, I was kind of nervous about meeting you, Griff said, but I've really enjoyed myself. Nervous? About us? Chase asked in a dramatic voice, causing the others to chuckle. Well, my boyfriend's ex and his boyfriend? Yeah, I was nervous. Oh, you're both great, though. I can see why Leo is so fond of you, Chase. The otter felt his face grow warm under his fur. Leo noticed his discomfort. Hey, Griff, stop hitting on my ex. They all laughed in the way of friends at a shared joke. The meal over, they wandered around checking out the more meadow rides as well as the sideshow stalls and games. Kurtzo and Chase did well for themselves on some of the games, but decided against competing on the high striker. Leo and Griff grinned at each other when they saw it. Ready for some com- competition, Osito? Well, just don't cry when you lose, Leo Bach. Leo went first, getting the chaser up to 90 on his first try. He growled slightly and set his paws slightly further apart before trying again. This time the chaser went straight up and rang the bell. Well done, Sir Wolf, claim a prize. Leo wandered over the shelves of prizes and selected a stuffed red dragon, before walking back to the group, looking pleased with himself. At your turn, Asito. The bear took the hammer in his paw and turned it around a couple of times. Hmm... He turned to face the high striker and brought it down the pad, the chaser going to 85. Leo smiled and the bear turned, pointing the hammer at him with a grin. Then he took his second strike and the bell rang. We have another winner, choose your prize. Griff chose a wolf dressed in a lumberjack outfit. Well, that was a draw, I think. Oh no, I reached 90 on my first attempt, oh so. Griff just grinned as Kudzu leaned in and whispered. Why do I think you didn't try hard on the first go? causing the bear to chuckle quietly. They walked around carrying their prizes and decided to finish with a ride on the ferris wheel. Kudzu and Chase got on first with the others in the next gondola. The wheel turned slowly and paused to allow the people at the top to enjoy the view for a minute. The noise of the crowds quieted so they moved further up and both couples found themselves relaxing as the ride moved. Well, this was a good idea, Carriot, Griff said as they started to move back down. Leo snuggled up against him and nestled his cheek. This ride or this weekend? Or both. It's been good seeing your old friends and seeing you so happy at seeing them. We have plenty of stuff to do tomorrow as well. This is a great way to end the day out. The wolf paused. Would you want to do this again, maybe for longer? I think that would be fun. We should treat ourselves to a longer holiday sometime. I might have the... Oh no, later. What? Later, Carriette. When Leo and Griff joined the others on the ground, they decided it was time to head back to the hotel. After dropping off their prizes, they met up in the bar for a nightcap or two. By now they were all very relaxed being around each other, and the chat was friendly and meandering. After a couple of drinks, Kudzu was noticeably yawning. Oh, sorry, we had an early start to drive here. Well, I'm done for the night. Yeah, I think I'm good to go, Chase said, stretching. The others agreed, and after arranging a time for breakfast, the group headed for their rooms. 
The girl lay down on the bed with a contented sigh. Well, that was better than I hoped for. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah. Being with you on a weekend away is enough, but meeting Chase and Kurtz has been great. I really like them. Leo was aware that the bear was rummaging in his luggage. What are you up to? he asked, sitting up. Griff turned around, holding the long, thin box in his paws. Well, this came last week. I had to order it from a friend. I was uh, just r- waiting for the right moment to give it to you. He held the box out to the wolf, looking as shy and nervous as Leo had ever seen him. He opened it. Inside was what looked like a carved spoon, though the bowl was in the shape of a heart, and above it a wheel, another heart, and an anchor, topped off with a heart outline. He took it out and held it gently. It's a love spoon. My people have been giving them for hundreds of years. I wanted something special for you. Do you like it? The last four words came out in an anxious tone. I love it. The bear relaxed and the bed settled as he sat on it, making them fall together. Uh, There's something I want to ask you, Carriard. He fiddled nervously with his claws. We've known each other almost a year now. It's been, what, eight months since we moved in together? I know you said you had lots of problems and you weren't perfect. You felt bad about the way you treated a previous boyfriend. I know that if you go searching for perfection, you will end up alone. It doesn't exist. I know I'm not perfect. I have my own things you have to deal with. What I want is to spend my life being not perfect with the one who's as close to perfection as I'll ever find. I'm trying to say, will you marry me, Leo, so we can spend our lives being not perfect together? Leo looked at the bear. Griff's emotions were laid bare on his face. The love he felt completely exposed and felt echo on what it had done to him fall away. Chulo. I don't deserve someone like you. But if you're willing to put up with me for the rest of your life... Yes, I want to marry you, and I will. Griff's face was wet with tears as he pulled Leo into a tight hug and they fell back on the bed. (laughs) Sorry, Leo. Uh, I'm just so happy. Leo realised his own tears were mingling with Griff's. It's good. I didn't realise how much I wanted you to ask me until now. The wolf and bear lay on the bed in a tight embrace, their anchor bracelets glinting in the lamplight. Two wanderers, finally at a safe harbour.